On day one, I spawned into a flaming village as the Hulk. Max Hammer to smash! Suddenly, a giant green beast landed in front of me and said, In 100 days, I, the Abomination, will use my gamma radiation to turn the rest of the world into an army of mutants. Hulk confused. You can't even control your mutant form. You'll never stop me. <laughs> On day two, I woke up with a horrible headache in a destroyed city. What happened? I can't remember anything at all. I decided the best way to find out would be to retrace my steps. I headed back towards my laboratory, but when I arrived, the place was in shambles. Something horrible happened here. I rushed inside to see what information I could find. The place was abandoned and mostly everything was destroyed, but I found some notes that managed to remain intact. Testing phase. Today we are manufacturing serum number 23. If successful, the serum will be able to provide super strength to anyone who uses it. Yes sir, the military will not be disappointed. Things are going smoothly. I think this is going to work. Dr. Emil, do you think this is the serum that finally cracks the code? I think we did it, Max. I think we finally did it. Warning, system error. Oh no, everyone run! Oh, where am I? What, uh, what's happening to me? I can feel it too. <laughs> oh, smash! I remember now. The failed experiment turned me and Dr. Emil into monsters. But that can't be. I could feel a deep rage bubbling in my chest. All of the innocent people inside died because of my foolishness. Suddenly, my body began to change color and I transformed into the Hulk in a fit of rage. I began to smash everything around me to bits. I didn't care if the facility was already destroyed. I wanted to crush it even further. I was blinded by rage and on a mission for destruction. On day three, I rampaged around the world searching for anything I could to destroy. I came across a village, which I began to tear apart just to release all the anger I felt inside. It wasn't enough. Even though villagers screamed in horror as I demolished their homes, I wasn't going to be satisfied until everything around me was rubble. I couldn't stop and didn't want to stop. I needed to destroy. Just then, military forces arrived and pointed their weapons at me. Stand down or we will open fire. Oh, never stand down. The military began to retaliate against my attacks. There were countless soldiers, but their bullets didn't even make me flinch. As the Hulk, I had an astounding 40 hearts, as well as immense strength. I smashed into the ground, creating massive craters wherever my attacks would land. The soldiers flew into the air around me and fell to their demise. Even the tanks were no problem for my incredible strength and super thick skin. Between the army of men and tanks, they weren't even able to graze me with my new indestructible form. Hulk smash you! I paid no mind to my surroundings and continued to ravage the village as I fought off the soldiers. They weren't worth my time, but they were fun to toss around. After a lot of mayhem, I managed to wipe out the entire group. Hulk Trump! Hulk Hulk Powerful! On days 4 through 7, I continued my destruction across the overworld. Smash! Destroy! I continued for a while until I was interrupted by another green monster. Hey Max, it's me, She-Hulk. Jennifer Walters, remember? Hulk, angry! Whoa there, big guy, I can see that. Can you stop, please? You're causing quite a scene here. No, me Hulk! Hulk smash! In a fit of rage, I attacked her. Whoa, hey, stop. I don't want to fight you. Hulk smash! Okay, you leave me no choice. The fight was intense. I didn't expect someone of such a small stature to pack more of a punch than the military's bullets. Each of her punches actually managed to hurt me. While I was bigger and more powerful, she was much more agile. She was able to dodge and weave my massive fist and land punches of her own. In my blind rage, I couldn't think clearly enough to land a calculated attack. I continued to smash at her mindlessly, but I was getting nowhere. After a lot of fighting, she hopes calm demeanor gave her the one up on me and allowed her to land a devastating blow. That should knock some sense into you, Max. How about you come find me when you're feeling better? Then we can talk about what's going on with you and have a normal conversation. She left and I passed out, not knowing if I'd wake up as myself or the whole. On days 8 through 11, I woke up confused in a snowy biome. I wasn't sure what happened or why I was there. The last thing I remember was seeing the lab. Just then, a villager walked up to me. Weren't you a green giant monster a few minutes ago? A what? Yeah, you wrecked our town. You kept calling yourself the Hulk. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'll leave right away. I realized that every time I got upset, I would transform into the Hulk and destroy everything around me. I knew I would have to learn to control my emotions. I better set up my own shelter away from other people. I don't want to hurt anyone. I went to gather some materials, starting with some wood. I punched down a few trees and made a pickaxe, which I then used to gather cobblestone. Afterwards, I crafted a set of stone tools, including a sword, which I used to kill a few cows for meat. I then made some leather armor for warmth. Then it was finally time to make a furnace and cook up my warm meal before eating it. That's much better. After my meal, I found an isolated cave to call my home for now. I eventually dozed off, but it wasn't long until I heard my wife calling my name. Max, wake up. I've been looking all over for you. You never came home. Betty, get away from me. I think I'm a monster. You're always a monster in the morning, Max. No, a real monster. If, if I get upset, I, I... Shh, it's okay now, Max. Just come home and get some sleep. Betty walked me back to our home where I could finally calm down. Afterwards, I told her about how Dr. Emil became the Abomination and his plans to mutate the world. I can't believe Dr. Emil. The Abomination. Yes, sorry, I just can't believe he would do such a thing. The gamma radiation must be affecting his brain. And I think it's affecting me too. I'm, I'm... You're what, son? Just then, I realized General Ross, Betty's father, was at the house too. Oh, uh, Mr. Ross, I'm... I'm a loving husband. <laughs> Thank you again for letting me marry your daughter. Right. Anyway, I'm gonna be deployed for some time. I just wanted to see you before I go, Betty Boo. Deployed, sir? That's right, son. There's been word of some big green monsters terrorizing entire cities. Oh no. Good luck, sir. I can't let him ever find out. On days 12 through 14, I was feeling a lot better after a few days of rest, and I never once turned into the Hulk. I just have to keep my mind clear. Suddenly, I spotted a horde of mutants in the distance, heading directly towards my house. The Abomination wants to hurt my family? That jerk! Betty, go hide! She managed to get to safety, but I wasn't able to control my rage. My skin turned green, and I grew into a massive size. I was now the Hulk. Oh, crush mutants! I ran towards the horde and began to beat them down with my fists. They charged at me with their tusks and slammed on the ground with their incredible strength. They were able to send shockwaves out through the ground. It was an impressive feat, but it didn't faze me. I was so powerful that they could barely do anything. I swung wildly. I didn't care about my surroundings. All I knew was smash. Between the mutants' attacks and my fists, our house was torn to the ground. I managed to defeat every last one of the Abomination's goons, but I was still enraged. Not knowing that I was the Hulk, Betty came out to confront me. Please, stop, it's over. Smash! Please, I have a family. My, my husband is inside that house. Betty, okay? Yes, I'm safe, thanks to you. I couldn't bear to face her like this, so I ran away. Once I was far enough, I returned to normal. It looks like the gamma radiation affects my body, so it transforms whenever I get emotional or I'm in danger. I knew what remained of our home was beyond repair. Plus, it was no longer safe for Betty to be there with the mutants after us. I'm sorry for everything. I'll make this right. I headed back home in my human form and reunited with Betty. Max, you're safe. The Hulk just rampaged here. That's pretty scary. I'm glad you're okay, but we need to build a new safer place to live. On days 15 through 18, I traveled with Betty in search of a secluded spot to call home. We managed to find a suitable place and got to work. I used whatever materials I had to start working on the basic structure. It wasn't much, but my top priority was safety. I can't let those mutants come close to Betty ever again. After the main structure was completed, I still wasn't satisfied. This needs to be safer. Good thing I know a guy. I went to Tony Stark's mansion to go meet up with my old friend. I wanted to see if he could lend me any of his defense tech to use inside of my new home. What's up, Max? I wanted to see if you could do me a favor. I explained everything that had happened, including how I was the Hulk causing a ruckus in the city. Well, shoot, dude. Take the security gear and keep the wife safe, then. Thanks. Do you think you could also help me find a cure for this radiation disease? I really wish I could, but I'm super busy trying to find a way to stop an interstellar race of poisonous bug monsters from taking over a village. Well, okay. You know where to reach me when you find the time. Also, have you subscribed to MaxCraft yet? Huh? Yeah, I've been watching him on my breaks, and he's incredible. Cool! On days 19 through 22, I headed home with my new equipment when I was suddenly confronted by a pack of mutated creatures with spears. Get away from me! I tried to run, but the mutants were fast and their spears were long. They chased me and began attacking me with everything they had. 
I desperately tried to maintain my human form, but it was no use. Don't transform, don't transform, don't transform! Despite my efforts, I turned into the giant green beast I wanted to avoid. I used my massive fist to pound down the mutants that were after me. My attacks were super effective. I even destroyed the ground right from under them. They could stop me and my awesome strength. I could feel that the radiation was stronger in this area, which made my own attacks more powerful as well. I beat down the army until none of them remained. I was unstoppable. Hulk destroy! I continued to rampage around the area, smashing everything around me until locating a small device that was emitting a large amount of gamma radiation. There, a horde of mutant ghouls were feeding off of the radiation from the device. Hulk what device? I barreled in towards the monsters who immediately retaliated. They charged me and shot radioactive projectiles, making me poisoned with radioactive energy. The horde was able to do a little damage to me, even in my super strong form. The puny monsters were pretty easy to dispose of, but they just kept coming. They were starting to wear me down and annoy me when I accidentally broke the device, causing it to explode into a wave of radiation. Powerful! The radiation increased my strength, as well as granting me an additional 10 hearts and powerful whole cans, increasing my strength even more. I used my new boost in power to wipe out the horde faster than ever. They were no match. I went on a frenzy, destroying all of my surroundings. Firstly, I smashed the rest of the radiation emitter. I then smashed the trees, the ground, and even the mountain I stood on. Everything needed to be destroyed. I destroyed and destroyed until everything went black. On days 23 through 26, I woke up in the middle of the ocean. I had no idea where I was. Well, I better get swimming. I started exploring. After a while, I found an island. There, I punched a tree and used the wood to build a boat. Now that's gonna make getting back to land a lot easier. With my new boat, I paddled back to the mainland. Okay, time to get more materials. My plan was to continue adding on to my Hulk base, but I needed tools if I was gonna do that. I went underground, finding enough iron to make a pickaxe. After that, I continued, stumbling upon an even larger amount of iron. Sweet! With my new goodies, I made some iron armor to ensure I would be safe while I was still in my human form. After that, I returned to my base and added the equipment to the outside for security. I then expanded my build some more, making a brand new room to the side. After a lot of work, I went back inside, where She-Hulk was waiting for me. It's nice to see you, Max. I think it's time for a little family reunion. Shh! What if Betty hears you? Don't worry, she's not here right now. Okay then, let's talk. On days 27 through 29, She-Hulk explained to me that she was also infected when the explosion happened. The thing is though, I've been able to control my powers. How do you control it? I don't know, maybe it's my superior cousin genes? That's not fair! Tough cookies, but we can't have you blowing your lid every time you stub your toe. We have to get your powers under control. Agreed. And with that, my training with the She-Hulk began. Remember that time I pantsed you in the fourth grade? <sighs> yeah! It was in front of the whole school! <sighs> now quick, stop. Do you remember your 16th birthday? Ooh, y yeah, we spent the whole day together at the beach. Yes, wasn't that nice? Feel those ocean waves, feel the salty air. We spent the whole day playing in the water, building sandcastles and eating watermelon. Whoa, yeah, I can see it so clearly. Hold on to that thought. Huh, that was a nice day. That calmed me down. Thanks, Jennifer. On days 30 through 33, I was feeling more confident, so I tested my control over the hull. Okay, just like I practiced. Don't go crazy. Happy thoughts, ocean waves. Let's do this. I then transformed into the Hulk, but surprisingly, I was still in control. Whoa, Hulk do it. Now Hulk test on bad guys. I then traveled around looking for another radiation machine, knowing I'd eventually find some enemies to fight. After much searching, I finally found the abomination setting up another radiation emitter. Hulk has to destroy before he mutates everyone! Before I could get there, the abomination left, leaving me with all of the nearby creepers now mutated into dark, mutated ghouls. They began to charge at me, leaving me no choice but to fight back. Their horde was smart. They almost seemed to move, organized together to strike me. Too bad for them. I was more broad than they were brain. I knocked the ghouls down, but they had me in numbers. Suddenly, I realized that my enhanced ability to control my powers gave me the power to super jump. I launched into the air over and over again, smashing my enemies on the way down. Be so powerful! <laughs> when the fight was over, I ran over and destroyed the device piece by piece, gaining five hearts. 
Huh? Whoa! Bad radiation make Hulk stronger? Weird. After the machine was destroyed, a lone chicken pig waddled up to me curiously. I be Hulk. The chicken pig just started nuzzling my arm as if I was its mom or something. Uh, Hulk confused. Suddenly, General Ross ran over to a nearby mountain holding a grenade launcher. The chicken pig ran away terrified. There's that green freak. Finally, I can end all this madness. Stop! Me not bad guy! General Ross didn't listen and began to fire an onslaught of artillery shells in my direction. You're making me angry! Even angry and in my Hulk form, I knew I couldn't hurt Betty's dad. All I could do was run away. That's right, freak. You better run. Mark my words. I'll be the one to end your sorry life. On days 34 through 36, I woke up in a field as my normal self, dazed and exhausted. Wow. Those gamma radiation emitters are no joke. Gotta be careful next time. I hope Betty's dad is okay. I then left the area and headed back home to check on Betty. Hey, have you heard from your dad lately? No. Why? Oh, no reason. Just then, General Ross busted through the door, angrily yelling about the Hulk. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Mr. Ross. Don't get near me, son. I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. What did I ever do to you? You married my daughter, and I've never trusted you brainy types anyways. You're weak. How are you supposed to protect her from the monsters out there? You'd be surprised. <laughs> what was that? Nothing, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That's what I thought. He left, and I agreed that I needed to do more to protect my family, so I went mining for stronger materials to upgrade our house. Down there, I gathered tons of cobblestone and a few veins of iron as well. With my abundance of materials, I began expanding our home, making it much more Hulk resistant. It's looking good, but it'll definitely need stronger materials over time to stop a Hulk. On days 37 through 40, Betty asked me to go on a walk with her. Is everything okay, Max? You seemed really shaken up since the explosion. Betty, there's something I really need to tell you. Before I could tell her my secret, the abomination landed in between us and grabbed Betty. <laughs> What the? Betty, I'm coming! I hulked out and began chasing them down, but the abomination left traps along the way. Two huge mutant zombies were in my path. I had no choice but to fight them. Bring it on. They were insanely strong. Their hits felt like the kind of punches I throw as the Hulk. The abomination must have exposed them to some serious gamma radiation. They slammed me all over the place, but I slammed them right back. I couldn't let them stop me from saving Betty. I finished them off as fast as I could and continued running to catch the abomination. Luckily, as the Hulk, I had super fast regeneration. After some traveling, I found him with a mysterious red woman. Hello, Hulk. Meet the terrible, irradiated, red She-Hulk. What the? Where, Betty? Hulk confused! <laughs> the abomination left as he laughed maniacally. The red She-Hulk then looked at me, and I realized I recognized her. Betty? You, Betty? Huh? Betty? <sighs> me, Max. Hulk is Max. <sighs> I, I, I hate Max! <sighs> On days 41 through 43, the Red She-Hulk began to attack me. Her strength evenly matched mine, but I was holding back knowing Betty was still in there. Betty, snap out of this. She wouldn't listen. She was completely taken over by rage, punching me at her full strength. There was nothing I could do, so I had to fight back at full strength just to defend myself. She was a force to be reckoned with. The first few punches I could take, but as the battle went on, I noticed she was getting stronger. Max need end this. In a fit of rage, I charged at her and landed a superior blow, taking her down. Once she was down for the count, she transformed back into her normal self. I then quickly turned back into my normal self as well. Uh oh, I might have hit too hard. Betty, are you alright? Can you hear me? I knew I had to get her back home to rest, and quickly. Once I returned back to the base, Betty woke up very confused. Huh? What? What happened? It's alright. It's just me, Max. You're safe. This fire inside me. I can feel it. What is it? It's gamma radiation. The abomination infected you with it. You need to stay calm so you don't turn back into that thing. That bad, huh? Well, no, it was pretty cool. It's just very dangerous. You'll need to learn to control it. I never wanted this to happen in the first place. I'm sorry. Just then, She-Hulk showed up with some good news. Don't worry, I can help with that. 
While Betty rested, She-Hulk and I got to work on building an official training area to make sure we could train safely without damaging the house or hurting anyone else. This is perfect. Thanks, She-Hulk. And hey, where'd you get all the obsidian? Max, I'm a lawyer. I have some solid connections. Makes sense. On days 44 through 46, General Ross arrived at our home to see his family. I quickly blocked his entry to cover for Betty. Let me in, boy. I'm here to see my daughter. Uh, now's not a good time. Not a good time? Where's Betty? I want to see her. Uh, you, you can't. She's uh, sick. Yeah, she's sick. A nasty flu. You don't want to catch it, do you? A flu? Oh, well, I can't be getting sick. I've got a Hulk to capture. Give her my best regards. I'll be back to check on her. Of course, sir. Good luck on your search. Now with the general gone, it was time to train Betty. Okay, first things first. Let's get you a little angry so you can learn to control it. Okay, so how do we do that? How about a confession? I've been keeping this a secret, so it might make you a little mad for not telling you. What is it? Huh, well, how do I put this? I'm the Hulk. You're the Hulk. I wanted to tell you before, but I was scared you'd think I'm a monster. You attacked my dad. Hey, he attacked me first, I think. <sighs> I see you're getting mad. That's okay. The gamma radiation that turned me into the Hulk is now part of you as well. Try to control it. I don't think I can. Control your rage, Betty. It's the only way. Betty became too enraged and transformed into the Red She-Hulk. Well, that's not what I hoped for. I transformed into the Hulk as quick as I could and started to fight back. If our last fight was anything like this one, I'd have to knock her out to get my Betty back. She smacked me hard back and forth, but I was prepared this time. I tried a few jump slams too, but she was a tough nut to crack. Honey, you need to calm down. I don't want to hurt you. You think you can hurt me? <laughs> With the Siri focus device that the Abomination gave me, I'm unstoppable! Suddenly, she started launching fireballs at me with her enhanced fury. She set me completely ablaze and even set the training field on fire with her anger. Stop! Betty, please stop! Her super strength was one thing, but this was entirely too dangerous. I had to stop her as soon as possible. I finally knocked her down, causing her to transform back to normal. Controlling my form, I transformed back as well. Ugh, my head. Betty, are you okay? I see why you've been keeping this a secret. This is really scary. she Oak then came back to take Betty with her on a little trip. Where are you guys going to? Up to the snowy mountains. We're gonna have a little meditation session to control those powers. Ooh, that sounds like fun. See ya, Max. While they were gone, I took the opportunity to mine for more materials. I gathered more iron to increase my iron armor, as well as make an iron sword to help take down the gamma radiation emitters. On days 47 through 48, I was feeling angry about the abomination. Not only did he hurt me, but he also hurt Betty. He took everything from me. I have to end this quick. All of a sudden, General Ross walked up. How's my daughter? Oh, uh, she's good. She's feeling so good that she... She went on a skiing trip with Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, good. I always did like that, Jennifer. Good kid. Way better than you in every way. His comment irked me enough that I started to turn green. Thankfully, it was only my arm, so I could hide it. Excuse me one moment. I quickly rushed inside the house. Just give me one second, General. Hey, I'm not finished talking to you yet. It'll only take a second. I couldn't contain my rage anymore. I became the Hulk. Everything okay in there, young man? Max, not a failure! Well, don't lie to yourself. In a fit of rage, I busted down the wall opposite to the door and ran away. During my travels, I stumbled upon a village being terrorized by mutant jungle golems. Hulk, take anger out on bad guys! I rushed into battle and began to make quick work on the mutant golems. They might have been massive, but they were no match for my super strength. They could fire missiles out of their arms that homed in and exploded when they reached me. Luckily, I was able to crack them to pieces after a few heavy hits. After the fight, a baby villager approached me. Thank you for protecting our village. Take this flower. Oh. The cuteness of the baby villager combined with the sweet scent of the flower was just enough to calm me down and transform me back to normal. Sheesh. Hopefully I wasn't gone too long to be suspicious. I returned home and sealed the hole I had smashed. Thankfully, General Ross was still fuming on the other side. And another thing, I never like the way you smell. I swear it's like broccoli or something. Look, General, I'm sorry. I will never be good enough for your daughter, but I love her and I would do anything to protect and care for her. Oh, well good, you better. I'll be watching you. 
On days 49 through 52, I set off in search of any more gamma radiation emitters I could find. During my travels, I found a community center holding an anger management seminar. Huh, this could probably help someone like me. I sat down in the circle of different faces. There were all kinds of people there, which did make me feel less alone about my anger. And how does that make you feel? Angry, but now I understand their point of view, and that makes me a little less angry. Thank you, Doc. Ah, I see we have a new face. Why not introduce yourself? Oh, um, my name is Max. I began to explain to the group about why I was there and how I had to keep my emotions in check. But it just makes me so mad. Why would the abomination do all of this? Uh, Max, you're looking a little green. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> What was that? I looked outside to find Iron Man fighting off an interstellar race of poisonous bug monsters. A little help here? I shifted into the Hulk so I could help Tony out. He really had worked up the swarm. For every one I would take out, it seemed like two more would take its place. The bug aliens were incredibly freaky looking and had strange firepowers to match. Each one of their hits would set Tony and me ablaze. Thankfully, my tough Hulk armor resisted fire too. I was truly unstoppable. I rushed in with my attacks close up while Tony backed up from afar with his firearms. After a long battle, we managed to take down the last bug. Thanks, that was a close one. Now that that's over, can you help me find a cure for the gamma radiation? Sorry, no can do. Now I have to go to that alien bugs planet and exterminate them for good. I eat. On days 53 through 56, I continued to search for more gamma radiation emitters until I finally stumbled into a radioactive biome. The animals inside were mutated beyond recognition, and the sky was entirely green. This must be the work of the abomination. I walked around the biome to check on all the strange mobs. I had never seen anything like it. The animals inside were suffering greatly. Are you feeling okay, buddy? <laughs> Yikes. I must be getting close to the emitter. Just then, I was ambushed by a horde of mutants. The radioactive mutations had turned some of the mobs hostile. I didn't want to, but I had no choice but to fight off the mutated animals. They were all just little guys, so I did my best fighting in my human form. You guys are lucky you're not meeting the green guy. I pulled out my iron sword and started to try to thin the herd. They were attacking me so aggressively though that I had to get some distance between us. I hadn't fought as a human in a very long time. It wasn't easy. To make matters worse, they were completely deranged from the radio Radiation. After a lot of close calls, I managed to take down all of the mutated animals. Ooh, I definitely don't like fighting as a human. Unfortunately, the fighting wasn't over. A giant mutant mosquito emerged. I turned my focus onto the beast and transformed into the Hulk. He was incredibly powerful, even causing trouble for someone as powerful as me. He kept up with me with his wings and spit blue acid at me at the same time. This thing was a beast. He was more of a mutant wrestling pro than a mosquito. Hulk getting tired. Out of nowhere, Peter Parker swung into the fray. Hello, your friendly neighbor Neighborhood Spider-Man has arrived. Cutie Spider, help Hulk! Peter began to throw webs onto the beast, locking them down so I can land my own powerful blows. Between the two of us, we managed to take the monster down. After the dust settled, I returned back to my human form. Peter? What are you doing here? It's dangerously irradiated here. Ha, huh, did you forget? I'm already full of radiation from that radioactive spider bite. You don't have to worry about me. Gamma radiation is different. Thanks for the help, but we've got to get you out of here before you get hurt. Promise me, okay? All right, I promise. Oh, you sound like my Aunt May. See ya. I moved a bit further and located the radiation emitter, which I made quick work of with my iron pickaxe. Another one down. On days 57 through 60, I returned home in my normal form to find General Ross waiting outside. Mr. Ross, what are you doing here? Uh, I came to ask for your help. Huh? Why do you want my help? There's been sightings of radioactive monsters in the snowy mountains, so I need a scientist like yourself. Betty! The ski resort is far from these sightings. You should be fine. Oh, right. I'd love to help. Great. Follow me. Those sightings must be Betty and Jennifer. I have to make sure they're safe. I traveled with General Ross to the Snowy Mountains where we began to stake out. Sure enough, Red She-Hulk ran by. What was that? Follow that monster. I'll check it out first. Run my scans. Sure. That makes sense to me. With that, I ran to my wife as fast as I could. Ugh, where is Jennifer? She was supposed to be taking care of Betty. Suddenly, I felt an intense surge of radiation. She must be nearby. When I arrived, I saw Betty destroy a radiation emitter with her bare hands. Wow, you're amazing. Thanks, hun. 
It took me forever to not freak out when I destroyed one of those. Just then, we heard the sound of approaching footsteps. General Ross was too close to run, but I had an idea. Quick, play dead. I took out my weapon and Betty laid on the floor just as General Ross emerged. Wow, young man, color me impressed. She's still breathing though. Let's finish the job. No, wait, don't kill her. Why are you slowing us down? Let me call my scientists and we'll take her, it, to a lab. I promise she, it's worth more alive than dead. Ah, I guess the kid's right. We do want to create the next super soldier. Fine, you can have this one, but the next one is ours. General Ross left and I returned my attention to Red She-Hulk. Is he gone? Yep. Not bad, you guys. Jennifer appeared to applaud us for an outstanding job. Betty, I think your training is officially complete. On days 61 through 64, I returned home and got to work on our base. I started by building a zen garden using sand and other blocks to make it very tranquil. This will be very soothing for all of us. Next, I made a personal lab where I could continue my research on a cure to radiation poison as well as other brews. I'm gonna put you to good use. I wanted to make some armor for everyone to be protected in our human forms as well, so I grabbed my pickaxe and headed to the mines. I mined for a while, but I hardly managed to find any ore. This is taking too long. Time to let the big guy take care of it. I turned into the Hulk and smashed my way through the earth. Thanks to my super strength, I was able to mine much faster than I could with a pickaxe. Once I hit bedrock, I found diamond. Once I had enough materials, I crafted armor for Betty, Jennifer, and myself. Finally, we were suited up for anything. Things are looking good around here. On days 65 through 67, now that I had my lab, I thought I would get to work on my very own cure. All right, so I need poppies, bones, zombie flesh, seeds, and emeralds. I started by gathering some poppies and seeds in a nearby plains biome. It was easy to do and surprisingly relaxing. Ah, this is na- <gasps> Excuse me. Next, I waited for nightfall so the skeletons and zombies could spawn. Once they did, I hulked out and made quick work of the swarm. Smashing puny monsters was fun. By the end of it, I had plenty of zombie flesh and bones. Oh, crush pathetic mobs! Once morning arrived, I was only missing the final ingredient, emeralds. Those hard to find. Hulk smash ground. I used my super strength and dug massive craters, but after almost a whole day of looking, I hardly found any emeralds. Hulk want emeralds! Just then, a strange green cow approached me. Cow green like Hulk. Hulk like cow. I was feeling a bit thirsty, so I decided to milk the cow. But instead of getting milk, the cow produced a bucket of emeralds. This pleases Hulk! <laughs> Thank you, cow. With my ingredients all together, I returned home in my human form to test out the potion. I got to work until finally my antidote was complete. I wonder if this will work. To test it, I transformed into the Hulk and drank the potion. Instead of curing me, I accidentally made myself stronger. I gained five hearts and felt faster than ever. I went outside and tested it. My speed had been enhanced significantly. That's not what Hulk wanted. But cool. On days 68 through 71, General Ross showed up at my base. A giant geld green monster has been spotted in the Badlands. Been hurting a lot of people and animals. I'm gonna go check it out now. Let me come with you, sir. It can help me understand the science behind the abomination. You bring up a good point. Fine, follow me. With that, General Ross and I left my base. After a lot of traveling, we made it to the Badlands only to find the abomination standing beside a gamma radiation emitter. We had been lured into a trap. Okay, I guess this freak wants to tango. Wait, I wanna try talking to him first. Are you crazy, son? He'll eat you for breakfast. I ignored the general, walking straight up to the abomination. Dr. Emil, listen to me. I know you're still in there somewhere. You really don't want to be doing this, Max. Or should I let the general know what happens when you get angry? I imagine he won't like that. Please, we can work on a solution together. I have just the idea. Get him, boys! Like clockwork, one of his goons came out and began to attack me. I began to fight it off right away. While I was focused on fighting the goon as a human to hide my secret identity, the abomination grabbed Ross and began to run away. I knew he was in trouble, so I transformed to make quick work of them. <laughs> As the Hulk, I re-entered the fray. However, when I returned, even more goons showed up. Hulk, smash! 
their extra strength arrows bounced off my impenetrable skin, but they still knocked me back an annoying amount. I jumped to avoid their arrow onslaught and slammed into them with my massive fists. I couldn't let these guys stop me from saving Betty's dad. I tried to destroy the mutants as fast as I could before the abomination could get too far away, but there were just so many of them. After I took them out, I destroyed the dangerous radiation emitter to make sure no more goons would stop me, and destroying it caused me to gain five hearts. Hulk, please. Hulk needs save Ross now. I sprinted off in the direction of the abomination, but the trail had already gone cold. On days 72 through 74, I decided to go back to Tony in hopes of him helping me find a cure or a lead to finding General Ross. I don't know about a lead, but I'll see what I can do about that cure. I'm very busy though, so it might take a while. Of course, I understand. Since we're here asking favors, is there something you could help me with? Sure, what is it? Tony led me to a secret room in his lab, full of cool gadgets and a robot in the center. So, are you gonna tell me why I'm here? For a long time, I've been studying deeper into neural pathways to see ways to make Jarvis more advanced. For the longest time, it's been impossible. But with the recent surge in gamma radiation, I found a way to inject artificial intelligence into a robotic body. I don't know about this, Tony. This could protect every man, woman, and child. I see a suit of armor around the world. That sounds like a cold world. We need this robot. We need Ultron. Peace in our time. Imagine that. And why do you need my help? There's a few things that just aren't clicking on the engineering side of things. You help me, and I'll help you. All right, well, you're not giving me much of a choice. What do I need to do? Go grab some iron ore, sand, and cobblestone for me, and meet me back here later so we can really get down to work. On days 75 through 78, I began to gather materials as requested by Tony. I started in a desert biome and smashed up the ground for some sand blocks. Thanks to my powerful fists, this mission was gonna be a breeze. I burrowed until I ended up digging into another radiated biome. Abomination make quick work of overworld. I knew things were starting to get more dangerous, so I figured it was time to make an underground bunker for the base. I returned home and began to carve a huge area underneath the base. All the while, I gathered plenty of iron ore as well as cobblestone, so it was a win-win for both me and Tony's projects. Once I was satisfied with the size, I cleaned things up by replacing the stone walls with wood to make it more homey. I added a kitchen fit with a crafting bench, furnace, cauldron, and chest which I filled with plenty of food. No one go hung- Wait, I'm Max. No one's going hungry down here. Next, I added beds so everyone could have a safe place to sleep. Finally, I used any gadgets I had from Tony to beef up security just a bit more. With that, my bunker was complete. Perfect, a safe place to hide if things go wrong. Suddenly, the chicken pig from earlier returned. He was super excited to see me. Wait, you recognize me? Awesome! I decided to build the mutant his own little room, since he proved to be an ally. Enjoy, little buddy. On days 79 through 82, I returned to Tony's lab with all the materials he asked for. Thank you, Max. Now, let's get to work. The two of us got to work on Ultron. It was tough, and we ended up hitting a few roadblocks. But after some time, we managed to complete him. He woke up and began to look around at all of his robot glory. Welcome to the world, Ultron! Ah, finally. There are no strings on me. What? Ultron then pulled out a weapon. You gave him an Uzi? In retrospect, that was a mistake. Our creation immediately began to attack without warning. I hoped out and started to fight back, but he wasn't a pushover. Myself and Tony were the greatest minds around, and Ultron was the product of both of our intelligence combined. I rushed at him with my massive fists and tried to crush him to bits, while Tony fired his weapons from afar. I was incredibly powerful, but so was Ultron. His armor reduced the amount of damage my blows could do. Even as the Hulk, I couldn't fend him off for long. Despite being near invincible, Ultron started to break through my skin, causing damage. Please stop! You're supposed to help others, not destroy them! Now humans are the problem, and I will eliminate them all. Tony continued to fire at Ultron, keeping him distracted enough for me to run in close to land one final blow. I took Ultron down once and for all. Once the battle was over, I turned back to normal. Sorry, Tony. I know you had a lot of hopes in Ultron. That's all right. At least we contained him. He could have caused some serious damage. He could have even picked up a small country and dropped it back to Earth, causing mass casualties. That's weirdly specific. Well, hey, I do have some good news at least. What's that? On days 83 through 87, Tony was getting ready to tell me his good news. I feel like we've been looking at this Hulk thing wrong. We've been treating it like he's a disease, something to get rid of. Yeah, Tony, he's a huge monster that I can't control fully. Sure, 
But what if you could? I'm listening. I put together a potion that, in theory, should do just that. Put the brains and the brawn together. Tony tossed over a potion, which I picked up hesitantly. I understand if you have reservations, but I think this is our best shot. You're right. I want to protect everyone. I drank the potion and waited in anticipation for something to happen. I feel weird. Ugh, I think something is wrong. Suddenly, I transformed into Professor Hulk. I now had 80 hearts and felt completely in control of my Hulk form. Whoa, this is amazing! Thank you, Tony! No problem, big guy. I started to head home when I realized that I was no longer able to return to my human form. And I guess that makes sense. This is a combination of both of my halves. I knew I was no longer able to hide from Ross anymore, but I was strong enough to save him. It's about time he knew the truth. On days 88 through 90, I returned back to home base to regroup. I felt so different, so strong physically and mentally. Max, I want to come with you. Let me help you save my dad. I'm sorry, Benny, but I think you should stay here. And why is that? Because Abomination wants all of us. If I fail, at least he only has me to experiment on. And plus, I have the strongest grip of my powers now thanks to Tony's help. Darn it. I really want to argue with you, but those are really good points. Please just guard the base and chicken pig with my cousin. I'll try to be back as soon as possible. Okay, good luck, dear. I love you. I love you too. I set off in search of any clues to the whereabouts of General Ross. I scoured the lands in search of anything until I started sensing a weird amount of radiation. I headed that way and discovered an entire village filled with people in hazmat suits. Whoa, what is this place? On days 91 through 93, I entered the hazmat village to take a closer look at what was going on. These guys are prepared for a radioactive disaster. As I investigated, I realized the entire town was staring at me. I was a big green hulk, so I guess it was understandable. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I won't hurt you. You're a hulk, right? Yep, defender of the- Get him! Just then, the entire town attacked me. They swarmed me like flies, all trying to take me down as a group. When we take you down, the Abomination will be so pleased. The Abomination? Sorry, but you guys are evil. I began to fight off the mob of vicious hazmats. While they weren't the strongest bunch, they had an enormous amount of numbers. They tried to overwhelm me up close, but little did they know, they were exactly where I wanted them to be. When they were close enough, I beat them down with my fists and mats. One by one, each member of their army fell. All the while, they were unable to even scratch me. After a long battle, I managed to take down all of the hazmats until only one remained. But how did you manage to take out my whole army? You have an army, but all I need is a Hulk. Tell me where the Abomination is. I don't know where he is, but I last saw him here. The hazmat quickly tossed over a map. Stay out of trouble. That guy is bad news. I followed the map until I came face to face with a mysterious nether portal. He must be through here. On days 94 through 95, I explored the nether in hopes of finding the Abomination or General Ross inside. As I continued on, I could tell that something fell off. I could see that some of the mobs inside were now mutated. Has the radiation gotten inside the nether too? I followed the mutant until finally I arrived to find General Ross in a cage guarded by a giant mutant wither skeleton. Mr. Ross, are you okay? A green beast. You come to finish what your ally couldn't? No, it's not what you think. I didn't have time to protest. The giant mutant set its eyes on me and attacked. It pulled out its two giant swords and started swinging wildly at me. He was actually able to deal damage to me, but luckily my superpowers allowed me to heal back quickly. The monster was also able to unleash focused energy slashes at me from a distance. I tried to dodge them, but I was just too big. With some well-placed punches though, I knew I could break this skeleton's bones. With the final smash, I managed to take down the guard. Upon his death, he dropped a note. If you want to defeat me, we will have to battle where this all started. The Abomination. Well, that's cryptic. I'll have to seek him out elsewhere. I rushed to the cage and quickly broke down the bars. Get away from me, you horrible monster. It's okay. Come with me. I won't hurt you. I'll never go with you. Please, you can trust me. I'm Max, your son-in-law. Yo, what? On days 96 through 98, I returned home with General Ross and reunited him with his daughter. Betty Boo, you're okay. How could you not tell me you're married to the green monster? Dad, it's not what you think. I demand that you separate at once. I won't stand for this. Dad! Betty explained everything to General Ross about how we were both mutated by the Abomination and his plans to mutate the world. Are you telling me that Abomination mutated my precious little girl? I have to fight him. Dad, you can't. <laughs> Just then, General Ross's skin turned red. He had been mutated by the Abomination. 
I had to think fast and gave him a hit to knock him out. Sorry, sir. You can't hulk out on us now. While he was out, I locked him in a cage so he wouldn't go looking for the abomination. It wasn't safe. I have to make a cure. On day 99, I continued my research on a cure to the radiation until finally I had a breakthrough. I can't believe it! I was only missing one thing! I set off in search of the final ingredient, the mutton of a mutated sheep. After a bit of travel and a lot of luck, I came upon a herd of rainbow-colored sheep. If this doesn't scream mutant, I don't know what will. I made quick work of the herd and gathered their mutton for my cure. Once I had enough, I returned back to my lab and got to work. It wasn't long before I had completed two splash potions of my new formula. I only have two, but I have to test it first. I went to my chicken pig and tested one of my potions on him. After a few seconds, he transformed back into a pig. Whoa, I did it! I quickly returned to General Ross and used my last potion on him. He returned back to normal. What the? Let me out of here. I thought curing you would make you calmer. I guess not. With Mr. Ross now safe, I knew it was time to stop this from the source. Wait, where it started? The abomination means the original lab. On day 100, I returned to the old destroyed laboratory. The place had been torn to shreds and all that remained was a large hole in the floor leading into a cave. My guess is he's down there. I dropped down the hole and walked down the hallway to find that it led to a massive underground lab full of gamma radiation emitters. Along the wall, mutated beasts were being kept in cages as test subjects. I know you're here! Come out and face me, Abomination! Just then, the beast fell in front of me from the ceiling above. The Abomination unleashed a swarm of mutants to fight me. Mutant archers and spearmen fell from the ceiling ready for battle. They immediately started firing at me from far away while the spearmen charged at me. I'd have to take on this giant army first if I wanted to stop Abomination. While I was busy with his goons, the Abomination continued working on his doomsday device. I knew I would have to finish this battle with the mutants quickly. The problem was, there were so many. I did what I could to thin the crowd, but the archers would thwart me from getting in too close. Still, I kept on, slamming my fists into the mutants and ground as hard as I could. Luckily, my Hulk skin was nearly invincible. Otherwise, I would have been toast. I finally managed to take down the last beast, leaving only the Abomination left to take care of. I'm gonna stop you once and for all! I lunged at him with my massive fists. This was gonna have to be the final battle. His radiated muscles were so strong that he could pierce my armor. He even summoned small husks to swarm me during our fight. He wasn't playing fair, but I didn't expect him to. I tried to take out the husk quickly while the Abomination slammed into me. I landed the final blow, taking down the Abomination once and for all. All that remained now was his device. I rushed to it, but there wasn't enough time to figure out how to shut it down. I only had one idea. I hope this works. Hulk smash! I smashed the device to smithereens until it was beyond recognition. I looked around the lab to see that all of the cage-mutated animals had been transformed back to normal. I did it! 